Hey everyone, welcome back to The Fin Factor. I'm Paul. And I'm Aaron. And this is episode number 68. 68. Is that Melker? Yeah. <laughs> that, that's really? You had to ask? Yeah. Okay. That's about it, right? There you go. Yeah. That's the one. <laughs> awesome. Well, uh, obviously we are in interview format again, and we've got our guest Kevin Kurz on the show from The Athletic. Thank you, Kevin, for coming. Yeah, no problem, guys. Awesome stuff. So we're looking forward to talking to him about all things sharks, including uh, Logan Couture, uh, Tomas Hurdle, among uh, Barclay Goodrow, other such topics. Yep, Noah Krager. Uh, I'll talk about some maybe some trades coming up with Doug Wilson or potential trades, I mm-hmm. guess. Uh, the fire Pete DeBoer crowd, and <laughs> if they should still be around or not, and uh, if the Sharks are a playoff bound team or not, and that's about it. Okay, you ready to start the show? Ready. Okay, what is that disgusting thing on your neck? Oh, it's your head. <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> Just kidding, of course. I was talking about the ugly mole on his neck. Regardless, uh, so we're going to go ahead and just jump straight into it here. So we had Logan Couture. We talked about this uh, last episode, actually. Mm -hmm. He had one goal in October, and he had another seven goals, right, in November. November. So the question really is, why the turnaround? What was it? Is he not gripping his stick so tight all of a sudden, or...? Yeah, there's there's a few things probably to talk about there. Uh, I think the one first and foremost is, you know, he was the new captain, and is he carrying a little bit more of the burden of the team's start? And, and I thought it was interesting the other day, we asked the same question to Logan and to Pete DeBoer, and Logan said, no, not at all. He's the same. He you know, wants to win as hard now as he did previously. The captaincy means nothing. But from DeBoer's point of view, he was maybe carrying it a little bit harder just because of you know, when uh, wearing that C in the NHL, it is, it's an honor, and I'm sure Logan feels that way. Uh, I know he feels that way. And, you know, do you feel more of a responsibility to, to produce? Um, so that's number one. Number two is just purely shooting percentage-wise. You know, his shooting percentage was really low in October. And mm. I think it was a good 3 or 4% below what his career average was. So you had to start to think he was going to start putting it in the back of the net, mm-hmm. getting a little bit more luck. But, you know, besides that, he also said that he met with Dave Barr, and the assistant coach. And Dave told him, you know, showed him some video clips of maybe where he – Chances where he wasn't getting in the net, um, wasn't uh, you know creating those high danger chances that uh, that actually produce goals. So uh, I think all those things combined uh, sort of led to the uptick. But I don't think there was ever any concern that that Couture was going to get his game going. You know, on the list of players from top to bottom, his slow start I think was was way down here. That's fair enough. Yeah, yeah we had talked about that too. The this idea of a market correction, right? Yeah. Um, that you know, a lot of the the stats for the team seem to be kind of like uh, subpar, below what would be default, and them kind of uh, bringing themselves back out of that and mm-hmm. to where they they ought to be. And once that happens, of course, here the the sharks go on that that kind of a roll. So it's good mm-hmm. to see the captain uh, kind of coming out along with the team on that one. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, let's move on to Tom Tomas Hurdle. Okay. He's uh, he's kind of hurt. He's kind of banged up. And yeah. He's definitely not 100, percent and he looked a little weary last night. He kind of got took another hit last night. It was a little slow to get up. Yeah, yeah. I watched the whole thing develop. It was in the early in the third period, and he kind of went down awkwardly uh, at the side of the net, and then he tried to get up, and, and I'm pretty sure it's the left ankle he's dealing with. Uh, he tried to put some weight on it and fell right over again. So you know, Pete said it was precautionary. We'll see uh, if he plays in Carolina. Um, he's on the trip though. Yeah, you know, I can't actually confirm that, though, because yeah. there wasn't practice this morning, and okay. the team flew there, and, and uh. I'm, me- I'm actually meeting him in Tampa um, on Friday, but uh, I would I would think so, be just based on what Pete said, mm-hmm. uh, that it was precautionary, it's a four-game trip, so if, even if it's even if he doesn't play the first game, you would think he's going to exactly. play the second, third, or fourth game. Right. Yeah. So I think it would be more serious if he didn't go on the trip at all. Yeah, yeah. And I think Pete would have been honest with us at that point. If it was a little bit more serious, we probably just would have gotten a no comment. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, the fact that Pete told us it was precautionary reasons, uh, you know, I, I, I believe him there. And yeah. the Sharks didn't look particularly great without him in the lineup. I don't think they can afford to lose him. No. Do you think they can win without him? No. No, not regularly. Up, no, not regularly. No, yeah. he's their best forward. I mean, I, I think people forget. It. Maybe this is because Logan Couture had such the great playoff run last year with all mm-hmm. those goals. But during the regular season, Hurdle was mm-hmm. their their co their co player of the year with Brent Burns. Um, I had him as number one, and I think most of the, most of my colleagues had him as the number one guy for for the best player during the team in the regular season. And um, 
you know, obviously this team, as you guys know, is a little thin up front. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't see them going very far without Hurdle. I have a, I have a hard time seeing them even remain in the in a top three or, or four or wild card spot if he's out for an extended period of time. But again, it doesn't look like that's going to be the case. It looks yeah. like he's going to be back, and and yeah, they'll they'll, uh, they'll certainly need him. Kidding. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Well, he's not Tomas Hurdle, but uh, Barkley Goodrow did step in. It was kind of interesting to see a guy who's a perpetual fourth liner on this team. Yeah. He's kind of worked his way up the lineup a little bit. Obviously, without the the depth on the wing, he's kind of moved himself on to uh, Jumbo's line. But then with Hurdle going down, he jumped straight into the second line center position, mm -hmm. which is pretty interesting. So just maybe a little little bit about Barkley Goodrow and how, how he's kind of stepped up and performed admirably. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember talking to Roy Sommer. I want to say it was maybe about a year ago. Goodrow signed an extension. I want to say it was a year ago, maybe a little bit more than a year ago. Um, and I remember talking to Roy Sommer, and, and Goodrow had gotten sent down, and he worked his way down to the fourth line on the Barracuda, for crying out loud. Yeah. And, 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 and Roy said a quote, and I'm paraphrasing here, but he's like, he, he, he couldn't play, was, was basically the extent of the quote. And, and Roy Sommer, my favorite person to talk to in the organization, because <laughs> there's not much of a filter there. <laughs> um, but, you know, Goodrow, I, I think if you look at his career path, Originally, the organization didn't handle him the right way. Okay. It was Todd McClellan's last year. Um, you know, much like a, a little bit like Pete uh, is in a situation now. He had no choice but to play this guy because he had a good camp and there was nobody else. And you know, they rushed him to the NHL, plain and simple. And then when DeBoer came in in 2015-16, Goodrow, you know, made the team out of training camp and. I think Pete recognized right away, well, this guy's not ready yet, and they sent him down, and I think it was tough for, for Goodrow. Like, it would be naturally for anyone in that situation. And, um, you know, slowly but surely, he worked his way back up, and, 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 you know, he's probably the one guy, at least through the first two months of the season, that really is overachieved, I think, in terms of the forward group. That's fair. And he's become, you know, a valuable guy. He, he can take face-offs now. He wasn't a center before uh, last year when Pete put him there. He's such a valuable penalty killer. Um, you know, I've talked to other scouts around the league that, that have really liked him for a long time, too. So, um, you know, you benefit the guy at the end of the day for, for putting in the work and uh, earning his spot in the lineup and, and, and earning a bigger role. Now, I, that said, I think on a strong team, he's still an effective fourth-line winger. Mm -hmm. I think right now, you know, at the end of the day, should he be playing in the top six? Probably not. You know, he's probably a bottom six guy on a right. good on a on a on a deep team at forward. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, again, credit him for for uh, and credit Pete DeBoer too. I think for just the way they handled him and the organization organization handled him since Pete got here. Um, they did it the right way, and and now they have a very effective player. Yeah, he's, he's done really well. The, the question yeah. for 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 me was, uh, and I'm not saying it should have happened, but you know, you've got a a, a third line center in Jumbo. Mm -hmm. Why not just move him up? What was the the thought <laughs> there, and not just taking him and putting him. Uh, with the other second line guys, why not move Jumbo up to to the wing? You mean? No, no. Well, center because Hurdle was out. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I think we know the answer to that. Joe's not moving okay. very well. That's yeah. fair. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, that's there's got to be some concern there. Okay. I think, and uh, you know, at this point, who knows what Joe's going through? Because I remember last year, it was it was right around late December, and Joe was really struggling, and. We only found out a couple months later he was playing through. I, I remember talking to, I guess I shouldn't give it away, but I remember talking to somebody at the All-Star game. Let's just say <laughs> a good friend of Jumbo's, a former player. And uh, we were at that wine event, and so the wine was going down, and, and, and I started talking to this guy. He's like, oh, yeah, Jumbo was playing through that infected infected ankle. And I go, what? Yeah. What's that? Infected ankle? And then eventually, I get, you know, I asked Joe about it, and Joe was honest because it was in the past, and we were talking to him in February or March or whatever it was. I remember we were in Edmonton, and uh, and, and Joe was going into detail about how tough it was. And then I asked him again in training camp, and he called it the worst pain he's ever played through in his career. Wow, so cool, this, wow. this is a long way of saying who knows what he's going through right now. You know, 40 years old. You know, I'm about the same age. I, I pull my back getting out of bed sometimes. Like, <laughs> I don't know how the hell these guys play hockey at this age between him and Patrick Marlowe and some yeah. of these other guys. But, um, you know, we'll see what happens. We'll see if he gets stronger. At the end of the day, he's going to have to. And, and DeBoer said that he thinks he's getting better. He thinks he's going to get better and better throughout the, you know, the, the course of the season. Maybe that's his way of saying he's dealing with something. That's just speculation on my part. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, Joe, I think, is, is struggling a little bit right now. I think everybody can see it. And, uh, you know, I would guess this is his last year, but that's uh, 
it's still a little too early, I guess, to, to, to make that prediction. Too, I think, based on what you can see, basically, yeah, it seems like this is this yeah. is going to be it for. Yeah, and I, when I was talking, to, I wrote a story about Joe and Johnny Busick in, in Boston, and 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 I was with Johnny Busick in Boston for about a half an hour, and he told me that, and maybe he let this slip, but he said, you know, Joe told me last year he was going to go one, go for one more, go for another year, and I'm like, oh, that sounds like just one more year. Yeah. He's one of his best friends, so well, maybe well, that was a little hint. But you know, Johnny's 86 year, years though, old. Too. So yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I tend to think that this is probably it. Yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I know it's love the guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's give it his all. I'm yeah, sure. but I mean, at this point, Barkley Goodrow is the more effective guy, mm -hmm. I think, in that spot. So, yeah. What do mm -hmm. you guys think? <sighs> yeah, unfortunately, <laughs> it's it's sad. But yeah. I've been saying in a couple couple of our shows about Joe. Just it, to me, he doesn't look like he's going to be playing beyond this year. Patrick Marlowe, however, I think can play. I think he could. Yeah, the way he yeah. trains and the way he his. His game's a little different. His skating's a little bit better. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I think he could sustain kind of the newer NHL more than Joe can. Yeah, he still moves around, I think, a little bit better on a more regular basis, yeah. certainly, than Joe has been, yeah. So I could see Patty staying another Kind year. of in the same boat for me, but I do think that Joe would want to go another year. Whether he should or shouldn't, that's, you know, yeah. for you and me to, you know, whatever. But I think he would want to go for just that one more, just because he's that rink rat. He's the guy that cannot get away from the <laughs> rink. He, I heard a story, he comes to the rink to shower sometimes instead of showering at home. <laughs> I mean, he just he just wants to be there all the time. He's one of the boys. Yeah, it's going to be tough for every day, yeah. Yeah, yeah no doubt, yeah. It's we'll going to be tough when he's job at yeah, the, 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 the definitely. The practice <laughs> rink. I can't really see him being behind the bench, though, or a team. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. But, uh, He's too goofy for that, I think. Yeah, yeah. but I mean, <laughs> if there was a situation where he did want to retire, I'm sure, I'm sure Doug or Hasso would find a spot for him yeah. to do something. Yeah, some kind of player development role. Yeah, something like yeah. That. Take a couple years off, maybe yeah, exactly. move to Switzerland, and then come back when you're ready. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Switzerland, not Sweden, by the way. Right. Just thanks. Yeah. <laughs> well, Switzerland's where his wife's from, right? Right. And, and I said Sweden, Sweden. <laughs> like a year ago, okay, and yeah. haven't yeah. heard the end of it <laughs> from the fans. So <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice little joke. All right, uh, Noah Gregor, <laughs> next guy up. Mm -hmm. uh, he's been kind of sticking up in the lineup. And do you see this as maybe he's going to be it for the year? Uh, you've seen good signs for sure. Uh, you know, you you never want to you never want to declare these young kids ready to go just because they've had one good week or even one good month. Mm -hmm. You know, it's uh, you've got to do it over and over and over again every single game. And and, and you know that's that's the message that Pete tries to hammer home with these young guys that I think has been effective over the years is that you know even with Timo Meyer the other day we saw him mm -hmm. what was at the Detroit game I think he benched him the last five yeah, minutes in yeah. overtime and and that was Pete's way of reminding and Timo was actually playing well before that but but I think that was Pete's way of reminding him that listen we're short forwards you're one of the top guys here. We need you every single night if this team's going to go where they want it to go. Mm -hmm. And um, so, you know, you look at a guy like Noah Gregor, he, he, he's the latest guy getting a chance. And, and I, I think he's strung some good games together now. Um, Gambrell's had a couple good games together. Suomela uh, was was had you know a couple good games before he got hurt. So we'll see. You know this fourth line is probably going to be a work in progress for at least another month. Uh, yeah. You know, if not the whole season. Um, but Gregor showed some flashes, and, and and Pete has said that eventually he does see Gregor as an NHL player. Whether that's sooner than later is uh, it's up for Gregor to yeah. you know it's up yeah. to Gregor to, to show that. Uh, we didn't have this on the board, but what about uh, Mario Ferraro? Because he's kind of a guy that we talked about a lot. Yeah, we we're kind of thinking the same thing, especially for a defenseman role. You kind of you're waiting for that shoe to drop, kind of, and for him to get sent down eventually because he's so young and, mm -hmm. and doesn't have as much or nearly any NHL experience. Uh, he's been playing well, kind of like Vlasic was, not quite the pedigree as Vlasic, but yeah. um, he's up there and, and looks good. On yeah, he does. Basis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it'd be interesting to see because Simic's really even struggling. So mm -hmm. I wonder if. Um, I wonder if we see Ferraro get a chance with Burns, frankly, uh, on this road trip, uh, the way that's been going. Uh, I know Pete doesn't like Dylan and Burns together. Uh, I don't think, you know, I think Vlasic and Carlson is pretty much set right now the way yeah. they've been going. Um, yeah, we'll see. I mean, Ferraro's a guy, I think he's been consistently impressive, doesn't make too many mistakes. He's aggressive. Um, the guys like him in the room. He's fit right in that regard. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, I, he's here to stay. I don't think there's any doubt he'll be here for the season. Um, and, and he could be a guy that, that you know, and depending on what happens with Brendan Dillon or Simic in the offseason to pending unrestricted free agents, you know, he's going to be here for a long time. Yeah. 
No, and I'm happy to see that because I, I say this every time we do the show that Fro, I just I love everything he brings, like offensively, defensively, when he mm-hmm. jumps up in the play, when he's being physical, and and we've heard that before. Like, why does Shimmick work so well? Is because he seems to play that physical game without it being forced upon him. We we made this comparison before, or, mm-hmm. or analogy rather, where we talked about if you asked Tim Heed to go out and hit somebody. It's probably not going to go so well, right? Yeah, that's that's not part of with Yoko Ryan was a little bit too. Was that he just didn't really fit what they wanted right. him to do? Yeah, but with Shimmick, that's that's part of his game by default. And mm-hmm. I I think that Mario Ferraro, given all the skill set that he has, hitting is still part of his game. So I think he brings for me, he brings the whole package. I'm really excited to see where where his game can go. One guy I'm not at all excited to see anymore <laughs> is Lukash Radil, though. So yeah. um, he's worked his way out of the lineup. I know he's gotten. Uh, kind of yelled at at practice, not to the point where anybody would fire him uh, years later, just saying. <laughs> uh, but, you know, he, he's not really shown the, the coaching staff or anybody else really yeah. kind of what he really could do or what he is capable of, or maybe this is what he's capable of, but it's not really worked out for yeah, him. Yeah, he, he had some good games last year. Yeah. Frankly, he wasn't flashy or anything, but I think he was a guy that was trusted by the coaching staff, and, and, and you know, this year it hasn't happened for him. And he's gotten plenty of opportunity with good players in yeah. training camp, in games, hasn't done anything with it. I think what happened the other night, I forget what game it was, where he was benched for the you know whole third period. That mm-hmm. was, I think that was it for him. You know, he's on a one-way contract, so um, you know they have to, they they'd have to waive him, and uh, you know he certainly wouldn't get claimed by anyone. Say, you think so, anyone would pick him no, up? No, absolutely not. not. Yeah. So um, not to cut yeah, you off, I, I don't see, unless they run into real in real significant injury yeah. problems. We're not going to. I don't think we're going to. Well, see I mean, him in, in fact, yeah. Leon Bergman just got called up he did, recently. Yeah. So again, yeah. passing right over Radil, who's oh, yeah. already there. Yeah. Um, so That's yeah, a I good just point. Yeah. to me, it's like why, why not just why not just wave him? At yeah, I don't know what they're waiting for. That's a good question. Yeah, give him the opportunity to play with somebody else. Give yeah. him the opportunity to get some meaningful minutes in the AHL. Right. Um, I it could maybe spark his game. Who knows? But right. I, yeah, I'm kind of with you. I think he's. More yeah. or less done, unfortunately. Yeah. So, um, if they are looking for mm-hmm. uh, winger support, because it seems like that's the thing that's missing, right? Yeah. We're looking for that guy who can step in and be like, like a Nyquist was for us last season, right? right? Um, is is Doug Wilson maybe kind of poking around and looking? I know Pete DeBoer's kind of made a few comments that made it sound like he was indirectly asking for help. Yes. So. Oh yeah, no, no. Well, you're playing eleven forwards and right. seven D. I mean, you might as well just carry a sign around. <laughs> That's true. So. Yeah, and Pharrell got the the chance on wing. Yeah, or, yeah, it was on wing. Yeah, I never yeah. asked. I never did ask him about that. Yeah, yeah I'll have to, I have that filed away. But that was a little odd. Yeah, yeah. is that like uh, he went down the bench and said, "Who wants it?" And Mario's like, "I'll do it." Well, he might have been. Yeah, yeah. Might, why not? Pharrell's that kind of guy. Yeah. <laughs> So do you see that happening? Like, do you see that happening? Well, I think they're going to have to. They're going to have to find some help at wing. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I think that the organization expected more from the crop of young players yeah. than they were getting, and you know, the depth on this problem. If there's one real criticism of Doug Wilson throughout the years, it's depth has never been a strong suit of this team. You know, and and. and it, before I got here, when they were making the Western Conference Final back-to-back years, Joe Thornton was still one of the best players in the league. Patrick Marlowe was still one of the best players in the league. Mm-hmm. They had the rising up-and-coming guys like Kachur and Pavelski and Vlasic. And, um, but still, even those years, the th- third and fourth lines were not that great. Yeah. Um, and the goaltending, you know, Niemi was all right, right? N- Nabokov struggled in the playoffs. And, yeah. and I'm, I can't speak to that because I wasn't here. Um, but... You know, that was the year they went to the finals in 2016. What did Pete DeBoer do? He brought in Nick Spaulding and Roman Polak and Dinah Zubris. And listen, not sexy names by any means, but more effective players than the young players that he was given at the time. So, you know, you wonder with with, with Patrick Marlowe coming back, was that just Pete after this 0-3 star saying, (laughs) dude, give me something here. Like, look at these guys I got. They can't play right now. Um, and is there more of that going on right now? You know, who knows? But, I, you know, if, if I had to guess behind closed doors, I would think DeBoer's probably lobbying for another forward. But, you know, it's a lot easier said than done. No yeah. first-round pick next year. Um, the prospect pool is thin. Um, you know, most their top-end prospects like Gambrell and Ferraro were already on the team so right. you don't want to you don't want to you know and you certainly don't want to trade like a Timo Meyer for 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 anybody oh, right. or something yeah, yeah, yeah. you don't want to do that so um you know it's probably going to be a marginal guy i would think at some point um 
I don't think it'll be someone as as uh, of Nyquist's pedigree. Right. But uh, I think at some point, yeah, you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to do something here to, to increase the forward depth. So yeah. Probably some kind of third line winger or something, third well, or fourth line. Yeah, yeah, but that's my biggest issue with this team right now is basically there's two main areas of concern: it's the forward depth and the goaltending. Mm -hmm. And you know, can you can both of those get fixed in time for the playoffs? I think that's a big ask. Do you think the goaltending could get fixed? I I just don't see a trade happening with a goaltender in midseason. Yeah, it just ruins the whole chemistry of the team. And we talked, I think we talked about uh, with Doug about yeah. that, right? Doug Wilson last the end of last season, right? Uh, same thing where you just you don't see goalies get traded like that ever. No, and the time to do it was probably the off season. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Aaron Dell's got I think a one point nine million dollar cap hit. I can't see him having any trade value right now. Mm -hmm. I was intrigued when the Devils waved Ken Keith Kincaid, or was it the Canadians waved Keith yeah. Kincaid? Because I know Pete always liked him in New Jersey, and I thought, I wonder if they take a run at him. But you know, his numbers are bad this year too. So mm -hmm. his numbers are bad, but he's also playing on probably the worst team. <sighs> yeah, in the that's NHL true. Too, right? Yeah. So, yeah. It, and that's kind of my stance on it too. Is and. and you guys know I've been kind of um, the the goalie apologist that you guys have called me that. It's not so much that I'm apologizing for him. It's just I have a hard time looking at a lot of those goals. Even the Winnipeg game that that Dell played in, there was the one goal that goal that goes off of his glove. That that's totally on him. The empty netter, fine. And then the other three goals, it was very high danger chances. Right. And when you go through and you look at the rest of the, like the highlights of the, that game, you see a lot of Dell makes a save. Dell with a save. Dell yeah. with a save. And it's coming up with these key saves, but how many of these can you come up with in a yeah. game, right? So I, I kind of feel like a lot of it falls on the defense. Um, I know the goaltending numbers are considered goalie stats, but... Yeah, and that Winnipeg game, that to me was what, you know, every once in a while you hear the term, uh, that was a scheduled loss. Yeah. Like, to me, that was a game, they were just tired at the yeah. end of the... And, and you don't, you know, you don't make excuses, it's the NHL, blah, blah, blah. You're going to have games where the whole team just looks like crap, and, and they're tired. And sure. it's because of the schedule where you're going to play sometimes, I think it was fifth game in nine nights. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't too overly hard. I was actually I was surprised at how how lo how much Logan and Pete were kind of hard on the team after that game ended. But then the next day, it's like, well, I think we were tired. It's like, well, yeah, <laughs> that's, what, I, that's what I thought too. Watching the, and I thought most people that watch this team every yeah. day are like, yeah. you know what, those games are going to happen sometimes. Now last night was a little bit different. I don't think they were tired last night. I think they just got beat by better uh, the Washington yeah. game. I don't know yeah. where you run this, but mm -hmm. the Washington game that was, you know, that was getting overpowered by a team that's better than you right, right. now. So. Uh, well, this trip that they're going on is going to be seven games in eleven days, so we're probably going to see that towards the tail end of the of yeah. that eleven game stretch or eleven day stretch. Yeah, so. this is a tough one, and you know, in November all they had were four one game road trips, right? All in the same time zone, except for Arizona, which is only an hour. Yeah. And you know, the two extended road trips they've had so far, they've struggled. So mm -hmm. this will be a big test coming up because you know, Carolina, Tampa, Florida, Nashville—all teams that are kind of wavering a little bit, but. You know, the home team still has an advantage still in that dangerous situation. Teams when, too. Yeah, very oh, dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they could they could turn it on any time for sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, on the same topic as Pete DeBoer asking for help, we were saying uh, <laughs> there's some some haters, some fire DeBoer some haters. haters. I, I don't think there's as many of those as, and I let this get to me too, and I probably shouldn't. <laughs> but I don't think there's as many of those as 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 sometimes seems on social media. It, um, it's magnified on listen, social media. Yeah, and and if. You know, at the at the end of the day, it's who would you replace him with? Mm -hmm. Why are you just discounting his success that he's had here? Where he's taking the listen, I don't care what roster you have. If you take a team to the playoffs four straight years, that's an accomplishment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know, it, only the, the Sharks and I think only the Boston Bruins are the only teams that have won a playoff series in each of the last two seasons, and the only team that's played more playoff games in the NHL since DeBoer got here is the Pittsburgh Penguins, right? So, to me, he's probably the best coach in the NHL that hasn't won a Stanley Cup right now. And at the end of the day, that's what it's all about, but... Yeah. You, you think know, he has a he has a good pulse on the team. Absolutely I mean, does, yeah. For, and even for the a younger veteran guys. team. Yeah. Yeah. And and that that's the one criticism that, that kind of sets me off is when I hear, well, he's bad with the young guys. <laughs> no, he's not. You go go back to New Jersey and mm -hmm. look at the guys that so he because I remember this when he got fired from New Jersey he got brought into San Jose I was you know just looking at, at at press clips and talking to I remember talking to a colleague that covered the Devils 
And he's like, you should ask him at the press conference about the young guys, because that was a big criticism here, right? Mm -hmm. and, I, and, and I asked him, and I forget his answer, but you go back and you look at all those guys now, none of them turned out to be... He, all he <laughs> yeah. did was recognize that they weren't good. Yeah. And that's what he's done here. He recognized Barkley Goodrow wasn't ready yet mm -hmm. in, 20, in 2015. He right. recognized Mirko Mueller wasn't very good yet. And, and all these other guys. And, and, you know, just like he recognized that... Uh, you know, Lucas Radil isn't very good, and, and and you know Noah Gregor it seems like he handled him well, mm -hmm. gave him a shot, was scoreless in ten games, back to the Barracuda, and now he comes back and he's an effective player again. Mm -hmm. Dylan Gambrell, yeah, Gambrell. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Ferraro's a guy he's, he's had him in the lineup since game one, so day one. So That's don't tell true. me he doesn't give young guys a chance. Um, and just the development of other guys here, like you know Hurdle, Timo Meyer. Um, you know, Goodrow, all these guys have gotten better yeah. under his watch. We kind of forget that uh, Timo and Hurdle are still young guys. I yeah. think that's part of it. Cause and we, especially four years ago when, when Pete got right. here. Right, yeah. 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 yeah, so I think, yeah, there's there's a lot there's a lot to that, right? Because he, he has been yeah. um, but with a lot of the younger guys, and they have flourished underneath Pete DeBoer and his system. So, yeah. Right, no, that's, the guys, that's and, you know, he said it in the past that if, if a – he believes if, if a player's an NHL player, at some point they're going to break through and they're going to show it. And I and you know I don't know how you can argue that. Yeah. Uh, I, the, the one guy I think that he one time that he that he talked about uh, mishandling as a young player was was Adam Larson. Mm -hmm. But um, I you know other than that yeah you know he's he's I think he's handled the young players great and uh, you know his success here speaks for itself. Who are you going to replace him with? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, yeah. Babcock's There's, available. Yeah. yeah that's not, that that's nope. Not yeah. <laughs> now, listen, that's not to say they're going to lose their next 10 games, right? Sure. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And people forget, too, uh, that, he, that he signed a multi year contract extension yeah. last summer that kicks in this year. That is, I don't know how long it is. I've heard two years. I've heard three years. I've heard four years, but it's at least two years. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's good to know. So, uh, final word here. Mm -hmm. um, he had a segment called. Contenders and pretenders, where he kind of went through the Pacific Division and kind of said which ones are maybe overachieving and they're going to fall down the standings, and which mm -hmm. ones are underachieving and they climb the standings. So the question goes to you then, not for every other team, but for the Sharks: Are they a contender or are they a pretender? Healthy they're not, Sharks, I'm yeah. Healthy Sharks. <laughs> I don't think they're. I don't consider them a top-level contender right now. Okay. Um, but but you know, listen, it's such a long year, and people mm -hmm. tend to forget that that. Mm -hmm. In 2015-16, when they went to the Stanley Cup final, they were a 500 team. I think they were 18-18 and two on January. like January 5th yeah. or something, yeah. right? Um, before they took off, um, you know, maybe we're maybe Sasha Shemalevsky comes up and he turns out to be a player, and that's the guy that you have on your second line wing. That all of a sudden, you know, like so many things can happen. My fingers are crossed because yeah. I, I love that guy. <laughs> Maybe Aaron Dell has a bad start next game and they bring up Joseph Coronar yeah. and he turns into Jordan Biddington, right? Who knows? So much stuff can happen. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If now if the playoffs Doubtful, started today, yeah. I would probably say the Sharks are probably the Sharks are gonna lose in the first round. But yeah. it's you know, we're four months away from that. Yeah. So um, they seem to be a late blooming team under DeBoer almost every yeah, year that they've yeah. had, that he's been coaching here. Yeah. They usually yeah. pick it up after Christmas. Yeah, Last year, a little yeah. bit before Christmas, yeah, you know, that what the year they went to the finals, they, they it was in January. Was January so I feel yeah. like it's just, I don't know, it's like they they forget his system and they forget how to play it, and he hammers it into him the first three months, and then they go, oh right, this yeah. works, <laughs> yeah, and then it works. Yeah, and we've seen flashes of that I think in the last couple of weeks, especially with a guy like Carlson, who's such an important player, mm -hmm. who again struggled out of the gate. Maybe it was part of the, maybe it was partially because of the groin surgery. Um, but he's really going here lately, and, and, you know, he's the guy that they're paying him to be one of the best players in the NHL. He hasn't been that to this point. Mm -hmm. Has he been god-awful, terrible? No. Ha could he be better? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, and he has to be better. And, and uh, you know, Pete had a quote. I don't remember what it was exactly the other day, but it was, you know, he has to be that type of player if we're going to be a competitive team. And... You know, it's trending that way, but I think we just have to see more of it. Is that part because he didn't really get to train the whole summer after? Partly, like, yeah. Covering? Yeah. So uh, he's kind of starting a little slower. He says no. Pete sends a thank yes. Um, 
You know, I, I think he's a guy that might have to, at some point and throughout the length of his contract, look at his off-season regimen a little bit because he started slow last year too, and he's always kind of st- even in Ottawa. There were years he started slow, and he's he admitted that he's not a guy that starts out of the gate right away. So, you know, I think you worry about that a little bit when you commit to a guy for eight years that's going to turn thirty uh, whenever Next his year. birthday is. Yeah, yeah. but um, you know, he's he's I think he's starting to settle in, and and if he uh, becomes the Eric Carlson we saw from January or from December, December. to mid January last year, it's, this team's going to win more games than it loses. I would mm-hmm. think. Well, that's the hope. (laughs) Yeah, sure. We shall see. (laughs) All right, so uh, Kevin Kurz again. Thanks so much for stopping by. Yeah, no problem, guys. Yeah, appreciate it. Of course. Yeah. So you can uh, you can read Kevin's articles on the Athletic. Mm -hmm. It's uh, the cost of what a premium cup of coffee. A premium cup of coffee. Pour over. A pour pour over. over. (laughs) The fancier ones. There you go. In depth analysis from an insider. uh, Great statistical analysis. All that great stuff. So uh, go ahead, give them a look because it's phenomenal stuff. We uh, subscribe to it. We read it all the time, Mm -hmm. uh, and it's really good source of information. So anything else you want to throw out there before we? Uh, How about real quick? How do you take care of the trolls online? <laughs> I, I should be better. I could be better at it. Yeah. <laughs> it takes a lot for me to block someone, but yeah. yeah. You know what drives me crazy with like Vander Kane the last night, right? Yeah. Like that was a dirty play. You, yeah. you see the guy coming, you don't put your fist up and punch him in the face. Mm-hmm. And then, but because I say that's a dirty play, then he doesn't get susp- suspended. I hear all this. I told you he wasn't getting suspended. I'm like, I didn't say he was going to get suspended. I said it was dirty. You had a five minute major and a fine. That means it's a dirty play. <laughs> yeah. So. Stay off it's, Twitter. It's if hard. Yeah. Stay off Twitter if you've had a couple beers. <laughs> <laughs> Stay off Twitter after 8 p.m. Yeah. Those are the first two rules. Yeah, we're, we're kind of getting <laughs> hit up a little bit, I think, on I'm our breaking all the starting rules. Starting to this year. Yeah. It's no good. This guy, yeah, he needs to I go back listen. and forth quite a bit. It's hard sometimes, yeah, right? It's, it's yeah. really, really difficult, yeah. yeah. But nobody wins on the internet <laughs> except yeah. the internet. Yeah. Well, guys, I guess that's it for episode number 68. Milker Carlson, by the way. Right, thanks. Um, MK68. <laughs> Come on, how could you not? Jeez, man. Anyway, uh, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Do remember to uh, check out the live shows because we enjoy those conversations with you. One of these days, we're going to get Kevin to, to stop by. We'll do a live with Kevin here, too. Yeah, that'd be fun. And we'll then let you deal with the trolls directly. <laughs> Second half, sure. Second half of the year, we'll, fit, we'll do it. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Sounds good. You yep. heard it here. Cool. So, for Super Producer Jason, I am Paul. And I'm Aaron. And that's Kevin Kurz. And we will thanks. see you guys. Uh, oh. Later next week. All right. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. If you like this episode, check out our other content, especially interviews. You can interact with us directly through social media at The Fin Factor and on Instagram at Fin Factor. And don't forget to join our live streams on YouTube. Visit our website at thefinfactor.com where you'll find all of our episodes as videos or podcasts. You'll also find our exclusive merchandise to help support our show.